Uh, we really do worry about things. Some things, some of the things, you know, that are cause for anxiety are well-founded. Um, some of them really, uh, I mean, if we take a look at it, uh, they could be pretty simple. Like we start obsessing over maybe what somebody else has and we think that we deserve it. Um, whether that's material or not. Um, but we really seem to focus on things outside of our control, let's say, and we get worked up because we want to be able to control it. Um, what I'm dealing with right now, I wish I could just, you know, control it, but it's, it's out of my control, but I still have to deal with it, so <clears throat> it causes anxiety. And again, I, I, I really, I'm amazed at times at, at God's work and his hand in things like, you know, me putting together this message before I had to deal with what I'm going through with my dog, which is costing me, causing me great anxiety. Um, so the Lord really meets our needs, you know, in that way. He knows uh, beforehand what we're going to deal with. And um, he gives us what we need. So that's what we're looking at this morning. Anxiety. I'm not, of course, talking about a, a clinical sense where you have, and I've had them before, you know, anxiety attacks where you feel like, you know, you're having a heart attack almost. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the things in life uh, that make us anxious. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us the words that we need to hear I pray, Lord, as always, that you speak to me clearly the words that I need for my life. I know that you do, but in this setting, Lord, I, I pray that not only do you speak to me the words I need to hear, but speak through me the words that we all need to hear. Use me, Lord, as, um, as your messenger. I am your servant. Use me, Lord. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity for this responsibility um, so help us all lord this morning open our hearts and our minds so that we might hear exactly what you would have for us to hear today and then give us the courage lord as always give us the courage that it's going to take to make these changes i thank you again lord for all this in jesus name Amen. So, you have anxiety? I know you get anxiety, right? We all have it. We get anxious. So that's what we're going to look at this morning. <clears throat> and, and the funny thing was, because, you know, I, I, recently I've been thinking about it because I deal with all these other things. But, you know, what I'm dealing with today and looking at the things that I was dealing with when I, you know, they seem kind of minuscule now. So there's all these different levels of things that we have to deal with, but um, God supplies. And, and again, it's perfectly normal, right? In a lot of situations, it's perfectly normal. I, I'm not talking about, that, you know, that when, because I, I was there, you know, I, I, I was on medication for anxiety years ago, and I used to have those attacks where it just felt like everything was coming down around me. Um, so I think the majority of you should know what I'm talking about when I'm referring to anxiety, right? And not necessarily the clinical sense, but, you know, even, even standing up here right in front of you guys causes anxiety. <laughs> um, but really, when I speak somewhere else, you know, I was sharing the other day um, when we had somebody come and they were teaching a class and we had lunch while we were eating and they didn't eat because she was pretty much the same way I am. If I'm going somewhere and I'm going to speak and it's a luncheon or something, I don't eat until I'm done. 
because of anxiety, because of nerves, because I, um, I don't want to get sick, right? <laughs> so we all have anxiety. But even those simple anxieties that we all have to deal with, if we just let them sit there, you know, that pit in the stomach, and we're not, re and we're not looking for relief through God, um, if we're not communicating with God and asking him for help to deal with those things, um, we might end up going back to what we used to do to deal with those feelings. And that's not healthy. Another issue is um, you know we deal with something that we, we all understand. We want what we want when we want it and that also leads to anxiety because we talk ourselves into uh, needing things that are really a want and we want them so bad that we focus on them for so long and, and it become such a an obsession for us that it gets us to that point where we're overwhelmed <clears throat> in Luke chapter 12 verse 22 Jesus tells us, don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or clothes to wear. For life consists of far more than food and clothing. It kind of gets interesting when you, especially, you know, for, for like when we come in with, with the clothes on our back and we get up there in that sorting room and we're looking and we're like, what? Right, everything we seem to see, again, for me it was t-shirts and I just had to, look at every t-shirt that had something written on it to see what it said and then I'd put it over in a pile instead of putting it through to be hung and I'd look at it for a while and it ended up going back to the center with me at the end of the day. We can't let things like that get us overwhelmed to where we end up giving in to old nature, old behaviors. <clears throat> But we can get we get but we can even get anxious and all worked up about that don't about that don't we about what about clothing we ask God for help with something and we want it when we want it and when it don't come the way we want it sometimes we even blame God and that would go along more of the major things in life right um, We want things the way we want them. Why does so and so? Why did so and so have to to die? Why did uh, this happen? Why did that happen? What you know what I mean? We get so worked up in things, and and a lot of those are legitimate, right? Concerns, le legitimate things that would cause us. Psalm twenty-two, verse one. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why do you remain so distant? Why do you get why do you ignore me, my cries for your help? That that is overwhelming. I want to I want to say something though about that portion of scripture. And it sounds weird because it gives us hope. If we're lost and we're dealing with things and everything is overwhelming and we're taking all that on our shoulders by ourselves, we're hopeless. But if we are dealing with those things and we are at least in a position, in a, in, a, in a relationship with God that we know to cry out to him, we're not alone. Because being alone 
is the worst place to be when you're dealing with something that you'd rather not deal with, a loss. I say, I say this, and, and I, always have to, I always have to watch how I say this and make sure I, uh, I explain myself. But I've, it's not for me, it's one of our founders. It's okay to question, and listen to what I say, it's okay to question God in this way. The problem comes when he gives us an answer and we don't agree with it. The problem comes when God speaks to us directly through his word, through the Holy Spirit. We know in our hearts what God is telling us is true, but we choose not to believe. So it's okay to cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he'll give you an answer. He'll give you an answer. Yesterday, last night, I'm laying there praying, God, please help. And here's my answer. <laughs> The fact that he had already given me this topic for a Sunday morning to help me deal with what I'm dealing with. <clears throat> it's, it's okay. It's okay. God understands that we ask why. It's okay that we ask when? When will this happen? When will I be delivered from this anxiety? Do we really look at what we're asking for and expect it? When we want it, how we want it, or are we cool with God's answer, his timing, his response? Step 11 states, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for the knowledge of his will for our life and the power to carry it out. Is that what we're praying for? Or do we want more? You know, I, I, I don't want to pick on Keith, but... A lot of times when I talk to people about this issue of God's answer to prayer and God's timing, it has to do with housing when people are leaving, you know, housing or a job or something that you, you're trying to put together as you're getting close to, to leaving the program. Or, and I always say, when, when you find yourself banging your head up against the wall trying to make something happen, well, God is probably already answered your prayer and that's not the direction he wants you to go but we sit there and we self-will oh, come on God make this happen and then we get upset are we praying for and I used to always joke because I'm, I'm not even really a foreign car guy but when I was in a program I always said God just get me out of here. You know, I want a black Lexus, and I want a house with a picket fence. No idea why I kept wanting a black Lexus, but that wasn't what I was supposed to be praying for, right? What are we praying for? It's been my experience in my life and the life of others that when we stick to that initial, right, and don't, again, guys that are new, step 11 starts the day you make a decision that you're going to need God's help. Right? Step two or step three, really, you need to be in a step 11 at the same time because you need to be in prayer. Praying only for the knowledge of his will for your life and the power to carry it out. 
and the right apartment will come, the right job will come, those things will come. <clears throat> because when we focus on the things that we want more than the things that we need, you will have anxiety. And if we continue on that path, not trusting God to meet the basic needs of our relationship with him, then we're going to end up going back to what we know. So, first we have to look at when, right, Getting, waiting for God, patience, Lord, right? Give me patience. When you pray for patience, God's going to give you something to test your patience, believe me. Um, but it's also what? So I want to look at that, too. I look at it this way. We got enough to work on without having to worry about stuff and the things of this world. We need to be focused on our salvation. We need to first be concerned about our deliverance, our redemption, our salvation. Therefore, we shouldn't worry about anything else. We need to ask God to save us. We have to first be delivered. We have to completely submit ourselves to him. Completely submit ourselves to him. So again, in Colossians 3, verses 1 through 4. Since then, we've submitted ourselves to God. We have surrendered ourselves. We have sought and received God's forgiveness through Christ Jesus. So there is redemption in that. So since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Set your sights on what is above. Set your focus on God. Uh, it's one of those, it's easy to think, right? Oh, I just focus on God and nothing else. See, the problem is we're here. We're here. And as simple as it might seem, right, that you're going to see a whole lot of stuff in the warehouse in the sorting room that you want, it's funny how we talk ourselves into needing it. That's why I always, when, when somebody comes to me and says, I need a pair of shoes, and I found them. <laughs> so in other words, first thing in my mind, I found a pair of shoes I want. <laughs> right? If we're honest with ourselves, this is the things that, these are the things that we do. I'm no different. You know, I, I might be further along and I'm able to see myself and laugh at myself when I start thinking that way. Um, but we can get so absorbed in the things of this world, in everything that's around us, and they're not important at all. The world doesn't get any better just because we're in recovery. We still have to pay our bills, deal with people, and face the stressful changes that recovery can bring. There are pressures beyond our control that will tend to make us anxious or wear us down if we aren't careful to protect ourselves from the world's onslaught. And it is an onslaught. Sometimes it's worse than others. And I have found that the hard days, and, and, and again, I'm not talking about things like I'm dealing with with my, my dog, because that's, those things happen. But all of the stuff, everything that goes on around us, when we try to self-will things, whether that be self-willing wants, 
talking, you know, trying to tell us that we need them. Self-willing how we handle things that we have to handle. Or are we trusting in God? There are pressures beyond our control that will make us anxious or wear us down if we're, if we're not careful to protect ourselves in this crazy world we live in. So how do we protect ourselves? <laughs> Trust God, right? Focus on him. Seek the knowledge of his will for our lives and the power to carry it out. The Apostle Paul gave us a strategy to help guard against troubles of daily life. He wrote, Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. That's as simple as it's going to get, right? But again, simple things aren't always easy. The apostle also wrote, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Trust. Don't. Yeah, don't worry about anything. But pray about everything. So... Step 11, right? Have a conscious contact with God. That's why I always add constant. Constant. Acknowledging God in all that you do. Include him in every decision you make. Think about him. Commune with him, right? Before you speak. Now, that takes a little bit of work there uh, discipline getting that in there before you open your mouth um, but that will guard our hearts and our minds the idea of god guarding us from evil we face in life is comforting god's peace is promised only if we routinely turn every worry and need over to him and develop a grateful attitude Ooh. But even when I'm not getting what I want, when we turn our worries over to God's care, we will discover his protection and experience the inner peace that passes all understanding. I, for the last, well, not 24 hours, I've had such a knot in my stomach I love the fact that I have a relationship with God and that I'm able to stop and spend time with him during those times. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul gave us a strategy to help guard against our hearts. It's there for us. Did I already go through those? So, in closing, what's more important than inner peace? Without the, I don't want to say butterflies, without the bats flying around your stomach because you're nervous. Why should we ask for anything more? Right? Let's just start with that. The knowledge of his will for our lives and the power to carry it out. It comes when we have a constant conscious contact with him, trusting him. That is the cure for anxiety. That is how we receive inner peace. The serenity prayer that we recite so often, I recited it so often before I actually knew what it was. It's easy to say, God grant me the serenity, but unless you're letting go of the things that cause anxiety and fear and doubt and confusion, unless you're letting go of those things, you will never know. 
peace. It's not to gain stuff or getting what we want when we want it. It's all about getting right with God and being at peace with him. God is the answer to every need. Amen? Amen. It comes after we've surrendered self. And, you know, when we come into a relationship with God and we surrender ourselves, that most important decision a man can make, right? But we still have things that we have to surrender every day. When God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit about behaviors that need to change, we need to surrender that. When, when we find ourselves thinking a way that's not in line with his word, we have to surrender that way of thinking. Because it's all those things that cause that anxiety. It's separate. It's, di- it's opposite of what God would have for your life. Peace in all things, in the storm. Um, all that comes when we've surrendered self and we've been redeemed. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for all these things. I thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers before I even prayed them. I I thank you, Lord, for giving me this message, knowing that I was about to have to deal with the things that I have to deal with. You know, Lord, you know. So help us, Father, each one of us, Lord, to to turn to you, surrender ourselves to you, submit to you, and then receive from you what we need. We can't have inner peace if we're still carrying stuff, so there's a lot of stuff we're carrying, but you forgive us when we surrender them to you, when we humble ourselves before you and accept your son Christ Jesus into our hearts as our personal savior, you take those things, you forgive us of those sins. We won't forget, you forget, we don't forget, but we don't have to live in shame. So I thank you, Father, for that, and I pray that for each person here And Lord, once we've been redeemed and we come into this relationship with you, Father, we need to, and I thank you, Lord, that it's possible for us to continue, continue to humble ourselves before you, surrender those things that need to be changed. Help us, Lord, even when when we start focusing on things we shouldn't, Lord, help us to be able to look back and be completely grateful for all that you're doing in our lives. Help us to see those other things as not important. But there are things that are important that we're going to deal with as well, Lord, that cause anxieties. So I pray, Father, for comfort. We receive comfort and the knowledge knowing, Lord, that you are with us. And there's things in this, in this life that we live that um, hurt. So I thank you, Father, for being with us, even when the questions come, and why, why does this have to happen? Lord, you will answer in your time. Um, so help us, Lord, comfort us through that process. Again, Father, I'm just so grateful to be here this morning, that you have each one of us here this morning to give us this message, because it's an important one. Every word that comes from you, every message that you give, is more important than anything of this world. So I thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.